were in chemistry. The smallest unit of an element is called atom. And this is an atom. Atom is made of three subatomic molecules. You have the proton, has positive charge, neutron has no charge, and electron has negative charge. Proton and neutron stay inside the nucleus, so the center part we call the nucleus. And outside, there's the electron. Electrons stay in the shell. And the proton and neutrons that are a thousand times bigger than electron. When we calculate the molecular weight, they only use the proton and neutron. They ignore the electron. And that's the structure of the atom. You have the nucleus. Nucleus is the head, is the center part. When we talk about cell in chapter 3, you found the head of the cell, which include the DNA, RNA inside. Uh, it's also called the nucleus. So the nucleus, that's this part. You have the proton and neutron. And electrons stay outside. They stay in the electron shell. And each element have their different number of proton. So they use the proton to define what's the element. So like this one is number six, number six is carbon. And this number called atomic number. And when we calculate how much they weight, and these three subatomic part particles, proton, neutron, and electron, because electron is so small, they ignore the electron. They only use the number of proton and neutron add together and they're called atomic mass. That's how much they weight. Like a carbon, the atomic mass is about 12. So this guy has six proton, and atomic mass is 12. It tells you he has six, uh, six neutron as well. And now let's look at what's the isotope. This is carbon. Carbon have six proton. He need to have six proton. If it's seven, it's not carbon. And it's a six proton. Uh, his neutron number is six but if this guy has seven neutron as well it's still a carbon as long as the proton number is six it's carbon so carbon is 99 percent six proton six neutron but they have a little bit of six proton and seven neutron so when they we call them isotope and when we calculate how much they really weight we have to consider all of them. So it's like 99% use carbon-12 and 1% use carbon-13. And so when we calculate the atomic weight, we found they have decimal point, and that's the reader. So atomic weight is the average isotope abundance, like oxygen uh, is most of them, over 99.8% is oxygen-16 and they can have 17 and 18. The reason is their number of neutrons different. So they, they calculate all of them, this atomic weight. And this we call them isotope. And the structure of atom is the electrons stay outside. We focus on the electron because that's where those chemical processes happen. It happens in the shell, especially the outer shell. That's where those chemical bound happen. So now let's look at uh, electron. Electrons stay in the shell. So you have the inner shell, the outer shell. And all the shell follow the octate rule. Octate rule, also I call it 288 rule. This tells you how many electrons you can put in each layer of shell. The first layer, you can put two. And the second layer after that, you put eight. And the third layer, you put eight. And each atom, they need to follow the rule, the 288 rule, to make them happy. In chemistry, happy means low energy. So they will do their best, like carbon, this outer shell is 4. They need to find another 4 to make them happy. So they will have chemical interaction with other atoms. Neon, neon is a noble gas. You found the outer shell is 8. So the neon is very stable. They are very happy by themselves. And that's because the outer shell is, is full. So they follow the 288 rule. And every atom need to follow this rule. So they, most of them, the outer shell is not 8 or the inner layer is not 2. So they have to have chemical interaction with other atoms. 
and this is when the chemical bond happens. So the chemical bond are the chemical reactions between one and the other uh, atom. They either gain or lost or share those electrons and they form the chemical bond. So let's look at the first bond. The first bond is called ionic bond. Ionic bonds, they create ions. If this ion has positive charge, we call it cation. And if it has negative charge, we call it anion. And they will attract each other, and they form the ionic bond. A good example, sodium chloride. Let's look at the sodium. Sodium atomic number is 11. So this guy has 11 protons. That's why it's called sodium. And proton has positive charge. Because of that, we know sodium has 11 electron. Electron has negative charge. And when we look at the octet, octet rule, the first layer has 2, the second layer has 8, and the third layer has 1. You need to find 7 more. So it's very difficult for sodium to find 7 more electron. So it will give those electron 1 electron away. Because if it gives those 1 electron away, the outer shell is not this one anymore. It's this one. And this one has eight, so it's pretty happy. In chemistry, happy means low energy. So sodium love to give one electron away. And once sodium give those one electron away, it has 10 electrons and 11 protons. So it's positive one, positive one charge. It becomes a sodium ion because there's one more positive charge than negative. Now let's look at chloride. Chloride's atomic number is 17. And 17 means 17 proton, 17 positive charge. And it must have 17 electron because electron has negative charge. The charge needs to be balanced. So it has 17 electron. The first layer has 2. The second layer has 8. And the third layer, 7. You need to find one more. So for chloride, it's much easier to find one more electron than giving those seven electrons away. So chloride love to take one electron. And when the sodium give one electron away, 100% giving away, chloride 100% taking that electron. So chloride outside electron become 18. So 18 electron, only 17 proton. His charge is negative one. So chloride become an N ion, negative charge ion. And both of them are very happy. In chemistry, happy means low energy. So sodium chloride, when they combine together, and they are very, very stable. And that's the salt. So salt is a very stable uh, molecule. And that's ionic bound. And that's sodium chloride. And the bound to combine them together, ionic bound. And those ions, if they have positive charge, we call them cation, like sodium, potassium, uh, calcium, positive 2. So when you see positive 2, means it gives 2 electrons away. So still, it's easier for calcium to give 2 electrons away than gain 6 electrons. So they love to give 2 electrons away. Magnesium, the same, giving 2 electrons away. And this group, we call them N ion, they have negative charge, like chloride, uh, bicarbonate, the whole thing, HCO3, whole thing together, and has negative 1. And biphosphate, negative 2. And sulfate, negative 2. So these are anion, these are cation. Now let's look at a different bound, co covalent bound. Definition of covalent bound is electron sharing. They share electrons. And they can share one pair of electrons. So that's a single bound. They can share two double bound. And when they share more, of course, they're stronger. Uh, e example, hydrogen. So hydrogen atomic number is one, means one proton, one electron. And the inner layer of the shell, you need to have two electrons. So two, eight, eight rule, octet rule. So you need to find one more. You find another hydrogen. Hydrogen also want to have the electron. And both of them want to get each other's electron. Eventually, they share. They put their electron in the center, and they share. When they share the electron, for this guy, it looks like he has two. He's happy. For this guy, he looks like he has two. He's happy. So they share electron. And 
they use the dash line to represent the bound. That's the covalent bound. So the definition is electron sharing. They can share one or like the oxygen, they share two pairs. So that's the double bound. And the carbon, carbon atomic number is six. So six has six proton, it also has six electron. So six electron, the first layer, two, the second layer, four. So he need to have four more. And he need to find he need to uh, form four covalent bonds with other molecules. So he can combine with uh, oxygen and oxygen, or he can combine with other uh, four hydrogen, or he can combine with three hydrogen and one combined with another carbon. So suddenly he has three more possibility to connect with other molecules. And that's why the biomolecule we use carbon as the building block because it can form four covalent bonds. And when they form the covalent bound, they share electron. They can share them equally or unequally. And when they share them equally, we call the nonpolar covalent bound. When they share them unequally, and that's the polar covalent bound. And the reason is the electron has negative charge. So when they share unequally, the negative charge can come closer to one molecule. Uh, one atom than the other. And when they share so unequally, these partially negative and partially positive charge will become another bond called a hydrogen bound. So hydrogen bound is a weak attractive force. And let's look at the hydrogen bound. That's the water. So water, high oxygen and hydrogen, they share covalent bound. But the oxygen is eight times bigger than hydrogen. They're going to pull electron very close to the oxygen side. So the head part is a little bit negative because electron has negative charge. And the hydrogen part is a little bit positive. And another molecule the same. And those partially negative, partially positive will attract each other. And this bound is hydrogen bound. And they use the dash line to represent it because it's partially, it's not like a solid line. That's the covalent bound. So that's the hydrogen bound. Hydrogen bound is a weak bound. So you can break it. And because it's a weak bound, so if you need to break it, it can break it. And they can glue the molecule together. It's like those weak magnets. And it turned out hydrogen bound is used in the biological system a lot because that's the perfect glue. You can detach it, you can glue them back. So between water and water, they have hydrogen bound to glue the water molecule together. And we can break them, and we can bind them together. So hydrogen bound is used in a biological molecule a lot. And also in the DNA, they also use hydrogen bound to, uh, to bind those, the double helix structure together. So we use hydrogen bound a lot in the biological system. Let's take a short break.